Bricks and Minifigs is your one-stop shop for all things LEGO. Hit the link below to find a store near you. Hi everyone, Josh Wayhamlin here, and today I'm in the private LEGO museum at the LEGO Idea House in Billund, Denmark. This museum takes you through all of the years of LEGO history from the very beginning to today. Today we're taking a look at a very special room here. There's a few different rooms kind of hidden away within the museum. This is the LEGO Star Wars room. So we'll come on in here and you can see all of the decades of LEGO Star Wars represented in this room. As you walk to your right here, you've got kind of the bridge. This is kind of representing the design of a, a Star Wars ship and you've got these windows out into space with all of the sets represented there flying around and then of course the sets in the glass cases here as well. And if we go to the left of that, you've got the planet over here. So you've got some of the kind of far off Star Wars planets represented. And then more sets over here. Then lots more sets in the glass cases. And some more over here with more planets as well. So you've got just kind of a nice variety of all different Star Wars sets from over the years here represented to show the different designs they've done. We'll run through some of these in a little closer detail. You of course have the uh, Death Star there. That's from 2016. So that I believe is the newer Death Star set. You'll notice with a lot of these designs, they're ones that Lego has done multiple times over the years. So Lego of course is very famous for representing Star Wars designs multiple times over the years and kind of re-releasing sets. You also have Betrayal at Cloud City here from 2018. So this set is one that has kind of a lot of different sections to it and then a ton of minifigures as well. You of course have the, the Boba Fett there, which uh, the original Cloud City Boba Fett is one of the most sought after Star Wars figures. So it's nice to see kind of a re-release going on there. You got the B-Wing Starfighter here, uh, that's from 2012. So all of these are kind of nicely labeled. You can see a lot of the kind of UCS cards here are used as the kind of museum type design. Then Jabba's Palace over here. So it's not just the large sets that they have built, they have some of the smaller ones too. The massive Superstar Destroyer behind that, the uh, kind of big gray triangle pizza slice there, as some people refer to it. Then you've got a ton of the X-Wings, so I don't think they have the newest X-Wing set on display in, the mu in this section of the museum yet, but you've got this uh, large UCS model here, and then uh, and this whole middle row, I believe, is every LEGO X-Wing that they have released over the years. So going back to 1999, you can see some of the, fi the figure on the left even has the, the yellow uh, hands and face, so the early Star Wars figures had those um, yellow arms and then you've got one of the other uh, UCS versions right here and then we go to a much smaller uh, one from 2003 this is a little kind of micro fighter idea which is an idea they've revisited a number of times with the small tiny fighters X-wing fighter here from 2004 that has uh, yellow Luke and then Yoda with his hut and then a couple of years later, you start to see kind of the flesh tone minifigures with this 2006 X-Wing fighter. Once again, we get a tiny one with the 2011 advent calendar X-Wing. It's great to see kind of how they are able to capture and represent an X-Wing in all sorts of different scales using the variety of pieces available to the LEGO designers. Then you've got the 2012 X-Wing Starfighter. And then once again in 2012, you get kind of the uh, X-Wing Starfighter and then the Yavin 4 build there as well. And then here you get kind of the chibi version of it which is pretty funny in 2014. Then you start to see some of the different color variations like the Resistance X-Wing Fighter from 2016, then Poe's X-Wing from 2015, and then kind of returning to more of a classic look in 2018 there. So it is fun when they have kind of a lot of the variety on display that you can see that uh, up here you can see some of the TIE Fighters. So going back to 2003 and the 1999 on the very left there. So they kind of represent the timeline on certain sets here to give you an idea of how they've changed over the years. Feel free to leave a comment on which one of these is your favorite and which version you like the best. It's always interesting to see the differences. Yeah, you've got 2015 with the little small one there, then 2018. And then the big ones back there is 2017 and 2018 as well. 
this set here we've got just kind of on its own right now so uh it looks like they've got some more space that they'll be adding more sets as we know with star wars there's always more coming out you've got some uh mandalorian and the the ad at there as well down below on the bottom shelves you start to get some of the more kind of sculptural character builds with r2d2 and the child uh grogu baby yoda there then you've got bb8 and a uh, wonderful little porg with the uh, screaming face there <laughs> then all the helmets so this is a line that's been going for quite a while in star wars with the different helmet builds boba fett and the stormtrooper fighter pilot little advent calendar builds in the front from 2011 to 2013 then the slave one back there from 2011 and then bigger uh slave one builds once again going all the way back to kind of 2003 and then 2000 here at the earliest with that early slave one which that that design has always been one of the uh funnier designs to look back on you just look at kind of all the studs and the way that that's built and it i think it definitely kind of shows its age but also has a, a particular type of charm to it from the early star wars sets that's pretty fun as well now we can come back over to this corner and you see the highlight here is the millennium falcon models so down here is the original 2007 UCS Millennium Falcon, of course massive at the time. It really just kind of blew every LEGO fan away. The fact that LEGO would do a set of this size at this scale was just incredible. We've gotten so spoiled today with all of the massive sets that LEGO does and with how much they're kind of pushing into the adult audience. But back in 2007, uh, that was certainly not as much the case. So this set was, was really incredible to a lot of people. And then the new 2017 Millennium Falcon here as well, uh, with another fantastic UCS set, kind of redesigned it and brought it back for fans. So that's been really cool to see, still available today. Up here, you have one of the smaller Millennium Falcons and then another fighter hanging there as well. They use kind of just like, I think it's almost like fishing wire to hang these from the ceiling here, kind of give a sense of action as you walk around. Then these smaller, little micro fighters that you have here these are from 2014 2017 2018 kind of representing again that smaller scale and then the large tie fighter from 2015 this thing this the wings on this thing are just like massive very imposing as it's uh standing here even next to the giant uh, ucs millennium falcon this thing still looks very large these uh, areas around the edges are all made of cloth and you can see it just kind of sets the scene very nicely as we move back over to what i would call kind of the bridge section of the spaceship this is just a variety of everything here so we go back with uh, some of the early anakin's pod racer set from 1999 here again kind of lots of studs you get those yellow mini figures uh, what today would be considered a, a fairly basic build but this is when Lego was just bringing out the Star Wars sets in 1999. So, uh, you know, it, it had to start somewhere. And I think it's really grown into, obviously, one of the most influential and biggest themes for Lego today. And you get the little uh, Tatooine mini build there, which just captures micro scale so much fun. You can see the little kind of like C-3PO figures, R2-D2 figures just represented with the little studs. Uh, just two, three pieces to represent a minifig. And so it's always really interesting to see how micro scale work is done with Lego. Here is the Republic gunship from 2013. So this is something that we've had some different versions of over the years as well. A few different minifigures kind of already in the cockpit and turrets there. Just a fantastic looking set. If we go back up above here, you once again see some very small kind of micro scale building almost like a forced perspective idea as you're looking out the window like these are really far off in the distance coming back down here to the glass panels we've got Ray's speeder and the first order snow speeder there so these are somewhat newer sets 2015 um, from the the newer movie trilogy at least and so lego obviously has kind of leaned heavily into all of that and released as many products from those new movies as they could you see another ship flying here using that same technique of the the wiring holding it in place out there in space as you look out from the the bridge of the spaceship coming back down we have the moss Isley cantina from 2014 
you get uh, the speeder here, which I know is something that uh, we've seen a lot, and of course the various band members as well. The next case over is the Death Star Final Duel from 2015, and then Yoda's Jedi Starfighter from 2015. So uh, very unique with that Yoda set there, not something you see him represented with uh, very often. Another fighter uh, flying out there in space, and then one more flying here on the right side. So those definitely help kind of create a really cool environment as you walk in because it adds that almost kind of 3D effect when you look out there and it really seems like there's stuff, you know, out there in space and it's not just kind of the things on display in the cases around you. A few more sets around here. We've got this Naboo Starfighter, one of the more unique uh, Star Wars sets to come out from 2002, so one of the early ones, has those fantastic chrome elements. And this has always been one of my favorite of the uh, LEGO Star Wars UCS sets because it has those, those chrome elements and just really stands out from a lot of the other sets they've done with the theme. Then in 2017, you had these construction type figures. So this kind of harkens back to a Bionicle type idea with some of these figures. I know there was a lot of mixed reaction with these from the AFOL community. I do remember seeing a few builds at LEGO conventions where people use these for much larger scale Star Wars builds. Very different approach with that. And then the Y-Wing Starfighter from 2017 here as well. So that kind of takes you through pretty much everything in the the special Star Wars room here. The, the museum shows lots of stuff as you walk around. There's lots of different exhibits on city and kind of every imaginable Lego theme. But this specific room I think is laid out really nicely and just for Lego Star Wars fans is a really great kind of homage to the, the theme and everything that Lego Star Wars has done over the years. Thanks for joining us.